tonight. I want to welcome you and thank you for jumping in and joining us. And let's see who all is joining us tonight. Uh, Sarah, down there in Samoa, God bless you. Welcome. Thank you for jumping in. Samoa is one of those places that, I, that in my mind, it's like a fantasy place or something, uh, and I'd love to go to Samoa. Hey, Pablo, welcome. Good morning uh, to you over there. Hey, Karen. Uh, hi, Rick. Just got back from a road trip from South Carolina. Well, we're still on ours, so let's go. Hey, Anna from Atlanta. Uh, Karen, Carrie from Madison, Indiana. God bless you, Carrie. We love being able to see you. Hey, Rick, welcome. Pam from Indiana. Uh, Jan, Diane, uh, Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. We love that. Uh, Teresa from Pennsylvania saying shalom. Shalom to you as well. Tracy, uh, Phyllis, again from South Carolina. What's going on with South Carolina? Stan, the man from Madison, Indiana. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. So don't even worry about it anymore. Stan, the man is definitely in the house. Uh, hey, Karen, sweet spirit while road traveling through Kentucky. Awesome. Stop by and see us. We're just over the over the highway here. Uh, Ruth Briscoe, uh, Edith over in West Virginia. Look, Edith, there's a great move in West Virginia. So get ready uh, for a mighty outpouring. Fulton, uh, Missouri. Uh, Cheryl says, how did Hopkinsville go? Pretty remarkable and incredible. And then we were in Nortonville this morning. And uh, so I hope maybe some of you all were able to join us there as well. Uh, Mathel, welcome. Beth Spence, welcome. Good to see you. Barbara, and I know Beth and them have been down in uh, Florida, actually. Uh, I wish I could read that. Uh, Shalom desde Chile, Rick Curry. I know uh, I, I, he's saying peace. Uh, from Chile to Rick Curry, I believe. I don't really know. So if you know Spanish, somebody help me out there. But look, let me tell you something, Pablo. We love Chile. And uh, look, the other night I had a dream that we got to go to Chile. And so we're excited about that. Teresa Loft is in Tennessee, which is actually where we are tonight in Tennessee. Uh, Jenna, Sandy McCoy, Sandy McCoy, welcome. Uh, Rachel, all of you guys. See, I could spend the whole night just going down the list. Uh, David in Pennsylvania. God bless you, David. Charles Mayo. Welcome. Tanya in Georgetown, Kentucky, not far from my old home place. Uh, we need a move of God in Iowa. Isn't that the truth? And let's just believe God for that. Uh, so, wow. Ruth, welcome. All of you guys from Oklahoma. Uh, Carrie, Lisa, uh, Mississippi. Uh, we're going to be in Mississippi coming up. Uh, wow. Donald, Jackie, Rome, Georgia. Uh, God bless you, Militia Scott. Welcome, Asheville, Houston, Texas, Judy. Uh, all of you guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Louisville, Ohio, Paula, Laurie, uh, High Desert in South California. God bless you. Thank you for jumping in. Madisonville, uh, thank you for being there. Thank you, uh, Tammy. Thank you for jumping in. Crawfordville, Florida. Uh, we're going to be in Florida this coming weekend on Friday night. We're going to be in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, Friday night. Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Uh, I believe it's Grace Covenant Church. Uh, look that up. If you're anywhere in the Panhandle or South Georgia, be sure and join us right there in Fort Walton Beach. Or if you just need a good road trip to uh, Florida this next weekend, it'd be a great time to go. Uh, join us in Fort Walton Beach coming up Friday night as the awakening fire of God just continues to spread. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for jumping in. Uh, jo Jocelyn, welcome. All of you guys, uh, Jeannie from Texas, uh, uh, Ohio. Uh, Jonathan, welcome. Southeastern Missouri. Look at this. Is, not, is it not incredible, guys? Look at what we have the opportunity to do. Can you imagine if the great, great, really true great revivalists and, and, and ministers and leaders of previous generations had the tools that you and I have, think how quickly they would have impacted the world. Let's mean you go ahead and do the same. And look, guys, I'm going to be sharing a, a PowerPoint with you in just a moment. So jump, don't jump off too soon because I want to encourage you. Jocelyn's in Honduras. We love Honduras. I've been to Honduras and we love Honduras. We're praying for a mighty move of God. As a matter of fact, we keep coming back to awakening in the in Americas, Canada, Mexico, Central America, South America, Honduras, Guatemala. We got friends in Guatemala tonight and just praying and believing uh, for a mighty move of God. 
Uh, Lori's up in the Panhandle of West Virginia. Boston, <clears throat> wow, come on. We need a move of God in Boston. And, and I wish I could tell you a story. We were in a meeting, sounds like I am. We were in a meeting in Boston and it was a Saturday morning. And I don't know, there were several hundred people in this Saturday morning meeting right there in Boston. And uh, as I was up speaking, uh, it was as if I heard the Holy Spirit say that the work of William Seymour is not yet complete. And I begin to feel as if that the Spirit of God is birthing in Boston a very unique expression of an inner city awakening. And Boston needs that. Baltimore needs that. Philadelphia needs that. All along the eastern seaboard, we need leaders crying out for this great awakening. And uh, we've been to Boston, spoken in some of the older churches there, have deep family roots. <clears throat> in that area, and uh, we'd love to be back uh, right there in uh, Boston at some time. Holly, welcome. Uh, Tim, Nations Church in Orlando, Florida, welcome. God bless you. Thank you for jumping in. Tammy Smith, I, I, we could spend the whole time just going down through the list, couldn't we? You know why? Because it, it, as, as ironic as it sounds, one of the words that the Lord gave us early in this year was that the Holy Spirit was going to be forming uh, that when we gather in the name of the Lord, uh, we gather and it creates this mystic fellowship in the Holy Spirit. And so even though you and I are in different states, states different countries, different cities, we are connected through the internet. And in our gathering together, certainly the Lord is here with us. So we're praying for Maryland. Look, uh, the other night, we were on here in Maryland, kept coming up and coming up and coming up. As a matter of fact, a minister friend of ours was ministering in Maryland today, and he reached out to me early this morning and because he was watching the other night when we were praying for Maryland. How many of y'all remember? I started to say, let me see a show of hands if you uh, remember that. But if you remember when we were praying for Maryland the other night, put it in number one right there in the chat. Well, a friend of mine reached out to me and he began to say to me, hey, I'm ministering in Maryland today. And he said, I want to activate the word that we were praying over the other night uh, uh, in that time. And he is a Vietnamese pastor, preacher. He's got an amazing testimony. And so we continue to pray for Maryland. Hey, Michelle, welcome. God bless you. Uh, all of you guys, uh, Regina, I'm just going down through there. Uh, all of y'all, welcome. Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm looking at cities right now. Thank you for jumping in. Uh, there's Shay. We were with Shay last night at Fourth Dimension right there, downtown uh, Hopkinsville. And that's one of the places that we had scheduled to go before the outbreak of this outpouring and revival. But that's one of the few places that we felt as if we should keep. And man, are we so glad we did. So thank you again, Shay, for hosting us. It really was incredible. And uh, Cassie, welcome. Deborah, um, right there in the Big Bend area. We love the Big Bend of Florida, Pennsylvania. Um, uh, wow, everybody's got questions tonight. Questions, questions. So welcome. There's, um, uh, thank you for the question. Go ahead and give it to me. Uh, Luke, uh, Stephen Tina Smith, welcome to all of you. Uh, Phil Dance is watching. Uh, let's connect regarding digital marketing tech that will help us communicate with everyone who attended uh, Asbury Revival. Look, Phil, we, I keep saying we're going to do that, and we must. I want to do that so bad, and thank you for reaching out, and let's keep working, Phil, until we make that happen, all right? Um, I was in Florence, Kentucky, February 24th, some friends, such a awakening experience. Thank you so much, and we're going to be back, as you'll see in a moment, in Florence, Kentucky, April 20 to 22, uh, and we actually have put out an Eventbrite for completely free registration uh, because I'm just telling you the crowd is going to be uh, too big. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to house it in the church where we're going to be meeting. And so we may have to go to an alternate site or something. But if you can at all join us in Kentucky, April 20, I'm sorry, April 20 to 22, uh, go ahead and register. It's completely free. It just helps us to know uh, how to plan going forward. Uh, Illinois, Iowa, uh, there we are. All of these people. Uh, Asdis, I can't say that. Are you watching from 
Uh, it, you know what? It's got to be somewhere in Europe. I, I'm thinking, I don't know. And by the way, I'm going to be talking about Norway in a minute. So if there's anybody on here from Norway, uh, we need an update from you. Uh, Minnesota, Revive Minnesota. Let's go right there. You are uh, Lynette. Uh, uh, Shay, we love you guys as well. Oh, she's uh, from Iceland. As this is from Iceland, you know, it's so incredible to me how many people jump on here and join us from Iceland. Is that not incredible? And uh, so thank you so much. We love the Icelanders. Is that how we say that? I don't even know. I've never been there. Boy, would I like to go. Uh, Dwayne Krimpa, welcome. Denise, uh, River of Life, one of our favorite places in the whole world. Eva Martin, Mary, all of you guys, thank you for jumping in. Uh, Chad, Davenport, Iowa. Um, Mark Schultz, doing great things, uh, Pastor. Great to see another friend on the road. I know you're on the road, but you're in Texas eating steak and barbecue. So what can I say about that? I don't even know. Cleveland, any uh, uh, Tennessee, welcome as well. So look, guys, I'm going to share my screen for a moment, and I want to go in and I want to just give you some things tonight. And uh, so we're going to move right through this. But I want to thank you for jumping in, and I want to thank you for joining us. And so I would encourage you right now to go ahead and share this broadcast with family and friends because we're really trying to up our game. I I'm really trying to raise some money, get some new equipment, um, uh, uh, along with the travel. I, I really have in my heart to build a studio where we can do some things at a greater, more professional level. Uh, right now, I'm sitting in a motel uh, somewhere in Tennessee uh, on my way back to Florida. And we are going to be in um, Fort Walton Beach, Florida this coming Friday night. And uh, so be sure and join us there because I know you have many questions. And some of you all just want to say question uh, for you. And so be sure in a few moments to go ahead and write down any question that you may have. Uh, Paul Loon, thank you for jumping in. Thank you for joining. Our good friend, Dr. Paul I from Vietnam was in Maryland this morning. And I'm so excited to hear uh, how that went. So I want to go ahead and share my screen here. Now, all of you all that have been doing this with me for a while know that when I go to share my screen or do something uh, of a technological nature, almost anything could happen. And so we're going to go try to do that. Uh, I'm on board too. I'm a software engineer. We'll help any way I can. Come on. Uh, Raina, thank you so much. We need help, 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 because here, here's, here's what's going on right now, guys, that's unlike any other time in all of human history, and that is never before has there been this kind of a stirring in nations where we had the advantage of technology. And so that's part of the reason why this is spreading so rapidly. And so uh, I wanted to remind you that, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. I I'm gonna go over here, watch how easily I do this. It's just becoming easy for me, right? So I'm gonna do the slideshow right here. And uh, no, I don't wanna do that. Uh, I wanna go right here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, come on now. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Uh, okay, look at there. So uh, I think that worked. So somebody let me know if you can see that. It looks like you can uh, on my end. So look, some of y'all are going to be really proud of me because uh, I was actually able to share my uh, screen with you. So that's pretty incredible. Now, Two, two or three things I'm going to be sharing with you in a few moments. Uh, number one, I, I want to share with you the three pillars for this awakening. I want to remind you of that, but I wanted to do it in PowerPoint. Hey, Zeno, welcome. Thank you for jumping in. Cindy Burns as well. So glad. Thank you for telling me that you could see it. Hey, Daniel, welcome. Um, do you see youth leading a revival, Rick, and on fire for Jesus? Yes, Luke, look, 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 look. That's what it's all about. And so uh, Gen Z, you all know the ages for Gen Z really is about 18 to 25. Gen Alpha is the generation younger than 18. So here's what I want you to know. Uh, we are seeing unprecedented, uh, unimaginable things happening uh, all over the world. And we're thrilled to be a spectator and in as much as we have a responsibility to uh, carry this as well. So uh, thank you so much. 
And uh, by the way, thank you for those of you who support uh, us and contribute to the ministry because it really just helps us to uh, stay active. <clears throat> and we've got many, many big dreams uh, we uh, that I'm not going to go into right now. So, but I want to share with you tonight, I want to share with you three pillars for this awakening. And also, I want to share with you in a moment, uh, four anointings for awakening, four anointings that you need in awakening so that you can see uh, and understand and advance uh, in this time. I love all of the little hearts, by the way. So uh, thank you for sending up the hearts. Kind of keeps me entertained. I'm sitting here all by myself. Nobody's in this boardroom but me, but I appreciate getting to be here uh, with you. Hey, Ken, Debbie, uh, welcome, Catherine, Sandy, Paul, Janet, Deb, all of you guys that keep on jumping in. Uh, thank you for doing that. <clears throat> so I, I want to talk to you a moment just about storm the fog. And this is what uh, has really been on my heart today, this afternoon. Hey, Richard, welcome. Uh, Deb, welcome. Beaver, welcome. Thank you for jumping in. So storm the fog. What do I mean by that? Well, look, <clears throat> you know, in the time of a storm, many times uh, horses or cattle will kind of group together and they will just wait the storm out. Uh, cattle will just kind of get in a huddle in the middle of a storm and they will just wait and wait and watch it out. Sometimes they'll even retreat from the storm, which actually will end up making the storm seem longer. Hey, Terry Curtis, I just saw you come in the room. Welcome, Catherine, welcome. Thank you for jumping in as well. Uh, thanks, Richard, for saying hello. I just saw you come in, uh, sitting back there at the back of the room. Well, you know how it goes. Brenda, welcome as well. So cattle, they will group together in the middle of a storm, and they will end up waiting the storm out. Uh, nobody in that room but you and Jesus. Well, there you go. Hey, Gina, welcome. Thank you so much. And then uh, a, a cattle and horses will group together, and then they will just kind of wait a storm out, but not a buffalo. A buffalo, a herd of buffalo will run headlong into the middle of the storm. A buffalo will like attack the storm. Buffalo will go after the storm. They will push right into the storm. And actually that allows the buffalo to push through the storm quicker at a faster pace. So today I just felt like I wanted to entitle our time together to storm the fog. And that's what we need to do. We need to storm the fog. We need to understand that right now we're living in globally challenging times. Would you all say that's right? We're living in times that are really unprecedented. And, and we even saw this weekend on Friday, I believe it was, the 16th largest bank in America fell. And we know, we're hoping at least, that the federal government takes uh, aggressive action to ensure the stability here in the United States. But what I want you to know is that this awakening is a global awakening. It's not based on your nationality. It's not based on the language you speak. It's not based on the color of your skin, but this is an outpouring of love. And let me just let you know, we have learned so much about love in these days. And that's what this is. Hey guys, we got people on here from Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Is it that awesome? So, so I want to challenge you tonight, storm the fog. Don't get in a huddle with your three negative friends and try to wait this storm out. Hey, Shannon, welcome. But I want to encourage you to receive a buffalo anointing and begin to run into the storm. Welcome, Mary, as well. So let's go on to the next slide here, if I can do that. So I want to talk to you for a moment about the architecture of a global awakening. Now, here's what I want you to know, is that uh, right now, we are seeing an unprecedented expansion of this revival that began at Asbury College about three and a half, four weeks ago. Really is incredible. And by the way, they're on spring break this week and students are scattering out and going everywhere and sharing their story. And it is just remarkable. 
uh, Richard uh, Richard says the Jesus Revolution was awesome. I'm I'm so glad you got to watch that. And there are so many other components of that that they uh, obviously would not have had time, the time to introduce that I wish they had of because it would have been incredible. So I want to talk to you a moment about the architecture of awakening. Um, I love people that can design things and build things and have a creative eye. It's not really me, but I love the people that do. And so I wanted to talk to you a moment about where do we start? And I want to talk to you in a moment. I'm going to give you another slide, but I want to present to you the, the three pillars uh, of awakening. And I've mentioned these to you in the past, but I wanted to put them in writing because I wanted you to see them. So where do we start? So I'd love for you to take a moment and write down there in the chat area. I'd love for you to write, uh, where do we start? Where do you start? What are the first steps that you need to take not to be an observer of what is happening in the nations, but that you might become a participant of what's happening in the nations? Uh, some of you all went to see Jesus Revolution two or three times, and that's pretty incredible. Hey, Alan, welcome. Thank you for jumping in, and uh, we're delighted that you are here. So where do we start? So I'd love for you to get involved right now in this chat. Look, I don't want to just sit here and talk to myself and you guys listen, but I'd love for you to jump in the conversation. And, and I'm watching because I want to see those interesting comments that you have to contribute to this conversation. And who knows, I may just send an invite for you to join us right here in the Zoom room. But where do we start? Let me ask you a question. Where do you start? What are your first steps? Uh, where do we begin? And so uh, I want to share with you uh, in a moment, three pillars for awakening. Now, the second thing, where are we now? Where are we now? We're almost a month into this. And can I tell you guys that over the last month, I've had almost 8 million views on my Facebook alone. Look, I just launched a YouTube channel about three and a half weeks ago. And, and the first 10 days, I had over a quarter of a million views on my YouTube channel. So what that's saying is, look, there is a tremendous hunger uh, in the nations of the earth. And so we're just super excited about that. Uh, welcome, uh, Kathy, Luke, uh, so so good. Uh, I'm in a couple group meeting and involved in volunteer service for the Luke. Uh, awesome, do that, get involved. Uh, we're called to open a Christian youth center. Go ahead, let's do that. And uh, so anyway, let's go on. So where are we now? Now, here's what I put on the outline that you can see there on your screen. Uh, one of the things I've discovered in the last three or four weeks, it, there's basically three groups of people. One are risk takers, uh, two are caretakers, and three are the undertakers. Now, let's take those in reverse. The undertakers are just those people that say, you know what, it ain't never gonna happen. This ain't the real deal. There is no hope in the world. Look, I even, I've even had people try to debate me on my Facebook as to why I'm completely wasting my time, my energy, and my life because there is no hope in the world. And, and look, I told these people, and look, by the way, the lady that was reaching out to me was a pastor's wife. And she said to me, there is no hope in the world and you are wasting your time and wasting your effort and wasting your money. Shame on you. You know what? She's an undertaker. And somebody says, I'm starting with prayer, worship, and seeking God. There you go. Let's do it. And so she's an undertaker. Do you, do you know anybody in your life that just says, look, it's too late. It's over. There is no love left in the world. Can you imagine living with such despair? Hey, Janet, welcome. Thank you for jumping in. Thank you guys for sharing this because we're having an online conversation about uh, uh, what, what's happening in the nations in this global awakening. And uh, I agree, Carrie, the uh, Lord needs to touch her. But look, there are a lot of people today there are a lot of people today that are living with no hope. Look, I, I, I believe they're undertakers. They're, they found a beautiful thing, and they're just wanting to bury it. Put it away. I don't want to deal with it. Put it in a box and tuck it away because it's never going to happen. And look, guys, 
if you engage with me and tell me that that I'm absolutely making a waste of my life by doing what I'm doing, then I just want you to know you have no idea about my life. And uh, so it's incredible. And we're so excited about all that's happening. The second group of people are the caretakers. Those are the people that say, look, we just got to hold this thing together. It's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. So the best thing we could do right now is try to hold this together. We just got to bundle it up. You know, we just got to get in the arc of safety and huddle up, embrace and hold on uh, because it's the best thing we can do. Nothing else can we do. See, there are people that are caretakers. Uh, Michelle, I like this. Uh, it's never too late. All things are possible. There you go. I uh, got children have been praying for this for a long time. I believe that. When you take it to the streets, ask people how you can pray for them. Show them the love. Oh, there you go. I love that. And so uh, that's awesome. And look, let me just remind you all. Revival happens in the church. Awakening happens in the streets. So uh, let's just go ahead and say that. Let's go ahead and get that out there. Churches in Texas are having amazing visitations of the Holy Spirit. Look, uh, we, we're making plans now to come back to Texas. Uh, we were in Dallas, Texas last weekend, which is where my good friend Mark Schultz is, uh, or at least he was a day or two ago. Mark Schultz, if you don't know Mark, he's a lot like me in that you never, when you wake up in the morning, you never know exactly where Mark's going to be. But Mark is usually hanging around some really good brisket. So if you ever want to know where Mark Schultz, Mark is like Waldo. Where in the world is Waldo? Where in the world is Mark Schultz? I can tell you how to find Mark Schultz. Pull into any town and sniff out the best barbecue, the best brisket in town, and you'll find Mark. And he's probably filming it because he's a great, uh, he's a great videographer and, and a great man in general. Uh, it's never hopeless without God. Yeah, but you know, you have people that say, look, we're just undertakers. We just need to bury this thing and get out of our misery. Aren't you glad you don't have to live like that? Aren't you glad that you don't have to, to, to live with such despair? And then there are people that are caretakers. And then there's another group. There's a third group. This is the group I'm looking for. <clears throat> Who in the room tonight are risk takers? They're the ones that say, you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a risk here. I'm gonna I'm gonna step out on a limb. I'm gonna believe against all odds that there's hope in the world. Churches all around uh, where we live having awesome youth services. Look, throw fire on that. Throw gasoline on that fire, and let's just believe for a mighty mighty outpouring. And so you got undertakers, caretakers, and risk takers. Uh, look, if you don't know it, I'm a risk taker. And so we're out here believing the best for people, believing the best for nations, regardless of the color of their skin. Look, guys, uh, there are people that want to acerbate division in culture by exploiting, by exploiting uh, the, the perceived weaknesses of people based on economy, politics, skin color, language. Let me tell you something. That's to their own demise. Because right now, I'm telling you, there is hope in the world, Laurie. And what we're seeing is people are coming together. Nations are coming together. I mean, think about this. I'm sitting here in a motel uh, boardroom, actually, uh, in Tennessee somewhere. And uh, one of the first people jumps on is from Iceland. Uh, is it not incredible? We're living in an amazing world. So are you an undertaker? If you are, just go ahead and say, I'm an undertaker. Are you a caretaker? Are you just one of those people that feel like we just got to hold it together because doom and gloom is coming? Or are you a risk taker? If you're a risk taker, I want you to put a number seven in the, in the uh, chat. Uh, box right down there. I want you to put a number seven and I want you to say, I'm a risk taker and we are believing. Uh, Cecil says that pastor's wife is right about no hope in the world, but for a fact, there's always hope uh, in Jesus. God has been preparing me for revival, uh, fixing my heart on God. And, and look, I, I, I agree with you because I understand your heart and I understand what you're saying, but look, I do want to tell you, um, as long as we're alive and, and, and God is at work in the earth, there is hope in the world. There is hope in the world. There is hope in the world. And uh, we are thankful to God. 
and to the to Jesus for all that he's doing in these generations. See all those number sevens right there? I'm a risk taker. I'm a risk taker. Okay, so the other question is, where are we going? And I want to talk to you about four anointings to storm uh, the fog, storm the fog. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm going to share those uh, with you in just a moment. So I do want to remind you right here, uh, please mark this on your calendar, screenshot this, and please register for this, because I'm telling you, we're going to have nations there. Uh, leaders are going to be there from China. Uh, leaders are coming up for this from Honduras. We had someone on here a little bit ago from Honduras. Look, we've already been reached out to from leaders in Central America that are saying, look, we're coming to this gathering in April. They're coming from Guatemala. They're coming from Honduras. They're coming from Mexico. And, and look, we're excited about that. And we are contending for global awakening. And at this gathering in March, um, in, in April, the dates are April 20 to 22. And you see right there on the screen, surely y'all can see that image right there on the screen. You can see that. And um, so we want to encourage you to come. Uh, our theme is, and look, and a river went out. There was a river that went out of Kentucky, and it's impacting nations, and we're super excited. Uh, thank you, Cecil. I totally agree with you. Just a thought from a... No, no, it's the same perspective. I get your heart, Cecil, and I'm so glad you shared it, because it is the same perspective, and I appreciate you so much for saying that. See there, Shay's a risk taker, and I believe that, because I know Shay and her husband, Paul, we're praying that he gets to feeling better. So a global awakening, it's going to be in Florence, Kentucky, 7216 US Highway 42 in Florence, Kentucky. Now, I am putting right here in the in the in the uh, uh comment section, I'm going to be pinning a registration for you to use. And part of the reason why I'm doing that is because I, I need to get an idea as to the number that are coming, because I'm just telling you, I think right now we may already be beyond capacity for where we're looking at having this. So I don't really know what we're going to do, but you come on and make plans now. Do not sit at the house, make plans now to do that. Look, Deborah and Draco, I know Deborah. I know her, and she's a risk taker, and I love that. She's not an undertaker, and uh, she is a risk taker. No, 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 don't get me wrong. Undertakers in the natural, they're awesome people. They will be the last ones to ever let us down, But uh, so we're excited. And so, um, so look, uh, all, April 20 to 22, do not miss this. And we're going to be having a time of impartation and prayer. Uh, it, we're going to close out strong on Saturday morning. And look, I'm just telling you, make plans, adjust your plans, get in there, uh, come and join us. If you need motel, we'll give you some recommendations or get that motel early because there's a lot going on at that time. Also, the Ark Encounter is near that. And there's much to do in that area. So uh, be sure and join us right there. So uh, let's go on to the next one. So be sure and register for that. The registration is completely free. There's no cost to come to this, none. But I do want to encourage you to register because we are really looking at uh, what it is we need to do. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next one here. A uh, couple of things I want to remind you of. Uh, this is our book right here, The Sound of Awakening. And uh, so I want to encourage you to look at that. And then also, the other thing I want to mention to you tonight, about 10 years ago, uh, I started what I call the SOAR School, School of Awakening and Reformation. And we're going to be introducing this week a brand new online class that we want to encourage you to jump in and take. And we're going to be doing this class. It's going to, it's going to, we're going to meet uh, once a week for, for, uh, five weeks coming up to our gathering in April. And so we're going to be doing a class uh, really about storming the fog and the anointings for a global awakening. And so we're going to do that through the SOAR school. SOAR stands for School of Awakening and Reformation. And so I want to encourage you, when you see that, to uh, jump in. If you're interested in that class, then you can jump in. We'll meet in the Zoom a room where it's completely private. So you have to register for the class if you want to take it, but be watching that because we're going to be introducing the class 
Also, everyone who registers the class, I'm also going to be sending you a free copy of our latest book entitled The Sound of Awakening. And by the way, this book right here uh, was published about a year ago, uh, about a year before the outbreak at Revival, this outpouring. And so I want to encourage you, uh, when you sign up for the class, when you register for the class, I'm going to send you a free copy of our book as well. Okay, let's go on. Now, here are the three pillars. You've heard me mention these before, but I'm mentioning them again, and I'm putting them in writing tonight because I want to encourage you to get these fixed in your heart, and that is the three pillars for this awakening. I talked about these last night uh, over there in uh, Hopkinsville. Uh, right there they are, the three pillars, humility, honor, and holiness, and so guys, I want to encourage you with that. Uh, let's come back to humility. Let's come back to honor. Can I encourage you with something? I'm just watching these comments. So uh, can I encourage you uh, with something? And that is, we must learn how to honor and prefer one another again. Can I say that? Look, there are a lot of people that want to divide us. I'm telling you, they want to divide us they're going to divide and conquer if we allow them. And so, guys, I just want you to know that we are not divided globally. We're not divided by nationality. We're not divided by skin color. We're not divided by economy. We're not divided by politics. We are principle-based, valued people who, who, are, who are crying out for the covenant promise of God to be released, released in the nations, all right? Hey, Joshua Beam, welcome. Good evening. Thank you for jumping in as well. So there are the three pillars. I want you guys to write those down, screenshot those, get those in your heart, get those in your spirit, because they are, I believe, key for this. Now, here's just a few pictures. And uh, the top right corner is Mexico. Uh, the, the, the center picture at the top are our Chinese friends that we've met. Uh, they're going to be with us, by the way, in Florence, Kentucky. And then also, I have a commitment from the young man. Some of y'all may remember from Asbury. I did a short, it's still right there on my YouTube. I did a short video of the testimony of a young man that now over a million people on my Facebook alone have watched his two and a half minute testimony. It's amazing. And what I want you to know, I'll tag that video again here in the um, comment section when I get done in case you haven't seen it. But he's going to be with us in Florence. Uh, that young man has told me he will be with us in Florence, and we're super excited. And these guys from China, they're going to be with us, and we love those guys. Uh, the top left corner up there, uh, that picture uh, right there is from the Philippines. Uh, the one below, uh, the one from Mexico right there is the Philippines. Uh, the one there in the center is Dallas, Texas. Uh, the one over to the left in the center is, is down in Central America. Uh, the one the bottom right is Florence, Kentucky. Uh, on and on and on, these pictures. And look, I have so many of these right now. But you know what I also have? I have a lot of undertakers that reach out to me and they want to tell me none of this is real. They want to tell me this isn't really happening. They want to tell me this doesn't really matter. You look at these few pictures and you tell me whether or not it matters. You tell me whether or not there's hope uh, in the world. And so we're super uh, pumped about this. And look, guys, uh, I'm I'm tracking revivals right now. I'm going to do another big interview with a magazine uh, out of the UK. We keep getting reached out to from all over uh, Paris, if you can believe it, Paris, London, uh, all of these nations, all these cities in Europe, people that are reaching out. We're going to do uh, an article this week for a large publication uh, in the UK. We're tracking a revival right now. As a matter of fact, I will post... So you'll know it. I'll post in the message slot down in the comment section. 
I'll post an article from Norway where there's been a great revival breakout in Norway, and the young author directly attributes it to the outpouring in Kentucky and Asbury. And I'm telling you, about 10 years ago, we started traveling all over Kentucky saying there's a move of God coming to Kentucky that will change the course of the land. Look, friend, that move is now here. And I don't have to say that anymore because now I get to say there is a move of God in Kentucky that's changing the course of the land. So watch Norway, watch Wales, uh, watch Ireland. I'm telling you, it's remarkable. Watch all over Europe. Uh, we've been reached out a number two uh, from leaders in Poland, uh, Belarus. We're, we're uh, in Eastern Europe. People are reaching out, uh, crying out, saying, pray for Belarus, pray for Poland, pray for uh, you know, Ukraine, pray for the nations all over Europe, uh, Asia, the Americas, Africa, on and on. We've had so many leaders reach out. It really is incredible. But look, we're going to have, uh, there are going to be some leaders in Kentucky with us uh, from Chile. They're going to be from South America, Central America. There are going to be some there from Canada. Our friends from China are coming in. I'm just telling you, do not miss this because we're going to literally uh, pray and release the fire of this awakening uh, in a greater way. Um, uh, and, and so, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, we're, we're just excited about all that's happening around the, those undertakers are bearing false witness against the Holy Spirit in the church. I feel sorry for them. Me too, Mike. That's my point, man. Thank you for jumping in. I knew if I hit on that long enough, I'd finally get an amen. So thank you for the amen. All right. So let's go ahead. But I want you to see those pictures. And look, I, I don't know how many pictures I have like that. But I can tell you right now, it's a ton of them from literally all over the world. So look, save your breath for somebody else because you're never going to convince me this isn't real. You know why? Because I'm out here on the road, because I'm in the middle of it, because I'm watching it. Hey, uh, Selena, welcome. God bless you. Let us know where you're from tonight. Also, if you're on here with us right now, be sure and do that write down in the comment section where you're joining us from because we want to pray for you. Now, remember, tomorrow night, on Monday night, we're going to be, hey, Georgiana, look at you. Come on. Thank you for jumping in. I'm honored that you are here. So tomorrow night, remember, Monday night, we're going to be gathering on here live as we pray again for the nations. So be sure and invite. We'll make that post tomorrow, but join us right here. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, okay, I got to get back. Now, I, I want to talk to you a moment about the uh, four anointings and awakening. I want to get to that in just a moment. I want to show you here, remember the SOAR school. SOAR is School of Awakening and, uh, awakening and Reformation. School of Awakening and Reformation. The SOAR school. I'm going to be announcing a class tomorrow that I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider taking. Everyone who takes it, I'm going to send them a new cop a, a copy of my new book, and uh, I'm going to sign that to each one individually who who joins the class. And you, it's going to be online. It's going to be in my Zoom, and we're going to be talking about the four anointings and awakening and how to prepare your heart, your home for the harvest that's coming. The second thing I want to point out to you here is we have set up online, right on Facebook, the Mosaic House of Prayer for Global Awakening. Now, that is a private group uh, on Facebook that we have set up where we can specifically list prayer requests of nations that people can be praying for. And so that too is completely free. It's a private group. So we have to accept you into that group. But I want to encourage you, check out the group online here on Facebook at the Mosaic House of Prayer for Global Awakening. Now, the third thing there is the Awakening Mosaic podcast. You can Google my name, podcast, uh, Awakening Mosaic. You can find it wherever you find podcasts. And then also, I keep reminding you, uh, do not miss Florence, Kentucky, April 2022. I'm just telling you right now, it's going to be amazing. Now, the last slide that I really wanted to share with you, I wanted to provide for you a link uh, for an article. 
So if you want to write down that link, or I don't know if it will allow you to click on it uh, there, I'll post it in the link as well. But right there, you can go and read about uh, this latest tremendous outpouring right there in uh, Norway. And, and, and look, guys, let me just let me just remind you, for some of y'all that may not know uh, about that, but uh, in, in, in 1906, when the great Azusa Street Revival began to break out, uh, Norway was quickly impacted. And watch this. The, the Norway was used mightily over 100 years ago to release the fire of awakening in a greater measure over all of Europe and the world. So part of the reason why I'm highlighting Norway tonight is because I remember what most have forgotten from over a hundred years ago. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back in here. I'm gonna stop sharing that uh, slide presentation. And uh, so I just wanna jump on here with you. I, I, so look, uh, I, I it ended up not showing up in the slides. So, uh, so I, I, can you put a link on here for the class? Yes, ma'am, I will do that. Uh, Shay, I will do that. And uh, thank you guys for sharing that also. Uh, but let me list for you the four uh, anointings for awakening, because for whatever reason, that slide didn't produce. But look, hold on a minute. You got to give me a little bit of credit, because tonight, most of the slides even work. Uh, Donna says, I'm part Norwegian and finished. Wow. Can I tell you something? Uh, whew, Donna. I was doing a live, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get him on here with me tomorrow night. I'll get him on here with me. I, I was doing a live broadcast from Asbury uh, College. I was doing a live broadcast to Finland from Asbury. And the young man is a young Finnish man who now lives in Florida. It's got a tremendous reach in uh, Finland and in that amazing part of the world. And so we were doing a live broadcast. And when we did, I'm just telling you, you'll have to see the feed, but I'm just telling you the power of God hit that thing and it was incredible. And he still talks to me how they're playing that around Finland. So look, I'm just telling you, watch Norway, watch Finland, watch Europe, because the awakening is afoot right there in all of Europe. And so... Um, so, uh, Lord, pour out your spirit in Drayton Valley, Alberta. Uh, I love that. So, yes, thank you, Deborah, for jumping in there and uh, doing that. Jeremy Caverly as well. Uh, what an amazing testimony Jeremy uh, Caverly has. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for jumping in uh, tonight and joining us. I'm honored by your presence, sir. Thank you. And he's also a good friend of Dr. Paul I, who was uh, in Maryland today. And um, Jeremy, if you have any report from that, I don't have one yet, but if you have one, uh, then please feel free to uh, share that with us, all right? So look, I, I need somebody on here who's got really quick fingers to help write these things down for me in the comment section. Now, I will post them. Uh, I, let, let me see if I can do this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can multitask here, okay? I need somebody to uh, take a picture of this. I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Ricky's uh, getting distracted and I'm not going to do that. So somebody with quick fingers, write these four things down in the comment section. And when we get done, I'm going to be adding these in the comments. So look, when the broadcast is done, don't just immediately go away. Watch it for a few minutes because I'm going to be posting links and things to some of the things that we've talked about tonight. But somebody write these four anointings for awakening. Uh, I want you to begin to list these four things. Uh, El says, God bless from Denmark. Look, see, there's 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 an El from Denmark. Look, I, I'm just telling you, Denmark, Norway, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Look, uh, let me go back there a minute. Let, let, I, I've got to go back there a minute because most of us don't know. Many have never heard and most have altogether forgotten. But over a hundred years now, there was a move of God that was birthed in the life of a one-eyed black preacher here in the United States at Azusa Street, and it was the great Azusa Street Revival out in Los Angeles. 
And what I want you to know, it was not his move alone, because really Evan Roberts and many of those out of Europe that were moving in a dynamic move of God all over Wales that would literally spread around the world, and it came to the United States. But right after uh, William Seymour uh, began to move in this awakening, then what began to happen was Norway began to be immediately impacted. And Norway and Denmark and Finland and Switzerland and much of that amazing, unbelievable, indescribable part of the world began to be impacted with the spirit of hope. Even Iceland, we've got people on here tonight from Iceland, from Denmark, from Norway. So what I want you to know, this is not a United States move. Please forgive. I'm asking the whole world, would you forgive us as a church in the United States of America? Forgive us for making Christianity weak and impotent in the earth. Hear what I'm saying to you. Forgive us for pride and arrogance. And we come before you, world, in humility. My Lord, I'm feeling this right now. I I'm about to take this to a whole nother level because I feel in my heart that we need to posture ourselves afresh in humility and in honor and in holiness. Look, right, there's the Salvation Army. Can I tell you something? We were tremendously blessed. Uh, by the Salvation Army. And, and look, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, if you don't know the history of the Salvation Army, and if you don't know the generosity and the goodness of the Salvation Army, then friend, I'm telling you, I'm one of the biggest fans, I hope, uh, of the Salvation Army. Having never been an officer myself, I rejoice in the work of William Booth and his amazing family, and the work of the Salvation Army globally has been unprecedented. Can I just say that? And uh, yes, I can, because I just did. Back to watch Norway, watch Denmark. I'm telling you, watch Iceland. Watch that amazing sector of the world, because in the days of Azusa Street and William Seymour, Norway and that region began to be ignited with the fires of awakening and hope, and it wasn't long till it spilled over into all of Europe. I'm telling you, it's happening again. Did you know that about 1913, William Seymour, Maria Woodworth Etter, and some others begin to track a thousand year history. And they begin to declare in 1913 that in more than a hundred years from now, there will be a move of God that will be birthed in the earth and it will be greater in size and scope than Azusa. And friend, I'm telling you, we are in that move. And by the way, just so we're clear, you may cover would you like for me to take two minutes and cover a thousand years of a move of God? Do you like that? Look, we could begin with, with a Wycliffe's intellect. Come on, 15th century? It's going to be more than a thousand years. But we got Wycliffe's uh, intellect. We got John Huss's devotion. We got Martin Luther's reformation. We got James Comenius's teachings, which, by the way, is still the model for children's ministries around the world. And that's the truth. We get Count Zinzendorf's mission and his ministry of prayer. We got the Moravian's fire. We got Wesley's strategy. We got the holiness movement's conviction. We've got Seymour's hunger. We got Maria Woodworth Edder's preaching. We got Sam Jones, Lorenzo Dow, Christmas Evans, Duncan Campbell, Holy Hubert. We got Billy Graham, friend, and it comes all the way down to me and you covering thousands of years of human history. You and I need to discover that God is not a God cut out of woodwork. He's not cut out of fabric. He's not shaped by the fiery anvil of steel, but he is the living, breathing, smelling God. And uh, thank you, Salvation Army. Uh, let me just tell you all right now, uh, everybody on here, you need to say thank you to the Salvation Army, because I'm telling you, there's a revival going on even in the Salvation Army, all right? So I just wanted to cover that. What? But look, all of those people, John Wycliffe, you don't know John Wycliffe, you need to. What about uh, John Huss? I remember, man, remember the story of John Huss? What about Martin Luther, the boy who used to sing for his breakfast, the one that nobody would have imagined that the Lord would ever use him? 
was used mightily to birth reformation in the earth. So guys, I'm just telling you, oh, I, I got to come back to these four anointings, right? Somebody please uh, help keep me on track. So somebody write these four anointings right down in the comment section. Uh, Elle says, yes, yes, revival is here. Look, she's in Denmark. And every time the uh, Coleman, Cole McPherson, A.A. A. Allen, come on, somebody say that. And there's so many more of them. Look, I have right there on my Facebook, um, uh, the, the story of Elder Lucy Smith. You don't know her, but you need to. Out of Chicago, built the first mega church right there in Chicago. And to my knowledge, still is celebrated with having the largest funeral in the history of Chicago, Maria Woodworth. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Elder Lucy Smith. Check out my Facebook there and you'll see her story. It's pretty remarkable. Here are the four anointings for awakening. Number one, there's an anointing for perspective. Somebody write that down, perspective. I don't know tonight whether you're in Texas or you're in Denmark, whether you may be in Norway or Nebraska. I don't know tonight whether you're in uh, Africa or Antigua. I don't know tonight whether you may be in Hawaii or Honduras. I don't know tonight if you're in Ireland or if you're in Indiana. I don't know tonight if you're in Brussels or you're in Birmingham. I don't know tonight wherever you are in the world, whatever your language, can I let you know that there is a renewed perspective for you. There is an anointing for you to receive tonight that will give to you a renewed perspective, perspective of the times. Look, we're going to storm the fog. We're going to be a buffalo. We're not going to be a cow that huddles up with a little group and says, oh, my, my, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and there's no hope, and there's nothing we can do. Friend, we're going we're gonna to summon the herd of buffaloes to storm the fog and give us a new perspective. Thank you all for writing that down. There's an anointing for perspective. Now, somebody write this down there. The, the, the Bible character for that is Issachar, uh, I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R, Issachar. Uh, it, it was it was an amazing uh, ability in David's army to, to discern their times with the right perspective and then know what, what it is we need to do. My son 17 felt electric current of God in our weekly service. Go ahead and say that. It's, it's incredible. So the first anointing in this awakening is an anointing for perspective. Maybe we'll hit that again tomorrow night in our prayer time. The second anointing, somebody write this down, is an anointing for promotion. It, it, come on, somebody help me that. Salvation Army, Wilkes Bar Citadel. Yes, the power of the Holy Spirit sweep through our world in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for jumping in. So there is an anointing for promotion. Somebody say that. Somebody write down the anointing of promotion. Uh, my wife went to Swanky in Hershey and led worship in Cincinnati. That's pretty awesome. Uh, right there, Jeremy, thank you uh, so much. Uh, promotion, there it is. Uh, you know, our friend else in Denmark evidently has the quickest fingers in the world. You see that? Bam, promotion. Can I tell you something? Uh, it's time for your promotion. It's time for your promotion. It's time for your rising up. It's time for your ascendancy. It's time for you to get up. There is right now an anointing for promotion. I pray that you'll be promoted. I pray that you that you would get increases. I pray that money that has been lost will be recovered. Inheritances that have been lost will be restored. I pray tonight that you might be encouraged, equipped, and empowered in every way that you might see uh, the Spirit of God moving right there, sound book, mightily in Kathmandu. Look, we got friends in Nepal. We got minister friends right there in Nepal. We love Kathmandu. I've I've been invited to go to, to uh, Nepal so many times. I've never gone because 20 years ago, I had a vision of the fire of God descending down out of the mountains of Nepal and setting the beautiful Nepalese people ablaze with the glory of God. As a matter of fact, it spread over into Bhutan. As a matter of fact, it spread down into Northern India in a region that I remember to this day as being called Nagaland. And the spirit of the Lord is gonna set India ablaze with the glory of God. Can I say that right there? Uh, there is an anointing 
for promotion. Look at Esther in the Bible. Somebody write Esther. Uh, it's time for your anointing. All the ladies in the house, all the ladies in the house, write Esther, it's time for your anointing. Come on, somebody. Esther, it's time for your anointing. Uh, the anointing of promotion. All right. And then uh, the third one is an anointing for position. Uh, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. And guys, I've had a full day today. Uh, it's been a busy day, traveled in a motel tonight somewhere in Indiana. But I'm doing this because I'm telling you, I know what I know. And, uh, and what I know is the best is yet to come. And you better believe it. And look, God's wanting to give you a new perspective. He's wanting to give you a promotion. And the third one is, I'm telling you right now, he's wanting to put you in a new position. He wants to put you in a new position, David. That's that's the one we're looking at there. See, for perspective, is it's, it's, it's Issachar. For promotion, it's Esther. For position, it's King David. So I want to tell you, there's a king priest anointing being released on this call tonight. And look, guys, let me go ahead and say this right now. Because when I got COVID in 2020, uh, my doctor said that COVID should have taken my life. Uh, COVID should have taken my life. I had a severe case of COVID. My body broke out in blisters. I had a very high fever for days. And my doctor said, you're too sick to come see me. Don't go to the hospital. She didn't think I would survive. But she ended up telling me the only reason I survived was because I had made every effort to take back my health to take back my health, to become stronger and more fit in the days that we were coming into. Why did I do that? I did that because in 2019, I heard the Lord say, he's going to begin to renew the mind and restore the bodies of leaders for the days that we're coming into. Now, just so we're clear, since that word, I've lost over 115 pounds. I'm building muscle every day. I'm exercising. My nutrition is spot on with this amazing plan. And I'm just telling you, am I where I want to be yet? No. Am I going to be? You better believe it. And look, here's something else. Just in case you know, I believe in walking in a king priest anointing. Am I a priest? Do I do all this that I do? Yes. But I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm also building uh, income, sustainable income for the future, for legacy, for my family. And so I'm super excited about that. And, and look, anybody on here, let me just go ahead and tell you this. Anybody on here that you may need to lose 30 pounds or you may need to lose 100 pounds or you may just want to start a business and become an entrepreneur, become a part of our team, and let's build generational wealth together in the kingdom. So if that's you, then I just tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a link down there in my in the message area, in the comment section. When we're done, I'm going to post one link, and it's going to say health journey. If you're interested, click that link and let me know. And anyone that does that tonight, then I'm just telling you, I will coach you personally for absolute free. I will coach you for free to help you reach your goals. Why? Because it matters that we are body, soul, and spirit strong in the days that we're living in, right? And here's what I'm saying. There's a, there's a position, and, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, the anointing for a new position. It's the anointing that rested up on King David, and it's an anointing to come into a new place in your mind, your body, and your spirit. Amen? All right, and then the fourth one, the fourth one, did somebody write down that? Did somebody write down uh, anointing for position? I hope so. I don't remember now. The fourth one is this, an anointing for provision. There is provision being released. Healthy for kingdom work. It's exactly what it's going to be. I like that, as a matter of fact. So look, uh, newbie, I'm going to put on there, uh, that's the title I'm going to use for the link, Healthy for Kingdom Work, all right? So I'm going to put that on there, and then I'm going to put a link. If you're interested, click the link, and I'm going to get it, and we're going to see, and we're going to go, but I'll coach you completely for free. Why? Because there's an anointing for a new positioning in your life, body, soul, and spirit. The fourth anointing for awakening is provision. So right now, I, I pray for supernatural provision in your life. I pray for your provision 
whether you're in Denmark, Norway, whether you're in Iceland, whether you're in Europe or Asia or Africa, wherever you are tonight, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, oh, I think Angela, look at there. Angela just put all four. Did you see what she did? Did y'all see that? Oh, look at Shannon. Look at, look at there. Look at what y'all did. Look at that. Bam, 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 bam. Y'all got quick fingers right there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anointing for perspective, promotion, position, and provision. So, Father, we pray right now for supernatural provision. Uh, I lost 117. I'm very interested. Diana, I'm going to put the link on here as soon as we get done. So click the link if you're interested, because 117 is no joke. I celebrate you. It's amazing. Look, when the whole world is telling us that there's gross sickness in the earth that is unavoidable, wouldn't it be just like God to begin to make us healthy and fit and strong in these kind of days? Somebody's going to go on this journey with me, and you're going to be glad you did. Melissa lost 25 pounds since January. Awesome, girl. We need you on our team. Let's go do this. And uh, I love that. And somebody may be on here that you may be so super spiritual that it may bother you that we're talking about a king priest anointing. Hey, don't let it bother you because uh, we're just getting started. So uh, guys, those are the four anointings. Thank you for jumping in. I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint. Please share this. Remember, 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 remember tomorrow night. Uh, Teresa says lost 17 since January. Come on. I love that. So let's go. Let's go do this. You know, bringing hope to the world. Did you know what? Most people, I say most, so many people in the world today live with without any hope in their life, uh, even in their health. So uh, John says he's ready. So John, I can't wait, man. Let's go do this. Let's knock it out. Seriously. And uh, it'll be great. So I'm going to post the link right down there. As, as a matter of fact, I don't know if I can do that right now. Y'all just hold on a second. Because I'm I'm going to I'm gonna do this right here. Because I'm telling you, it's an anointing. Uh, it is an anointing in these days. Uh, King Priest anointing is being released in the earth. So I'm going to see if I can put that in there. Um, okay, I'm putting healthy for... King, kingdom uh, work. Ba, ba, ba. We'll put some fire emojis in there. <laughs> what did we do before emojis? Did you all know? I tell you what we did before emojis. You know, back in the day, those cavemen, they used to do emojis on the wall. Y'all remember that? And uh, here is the link. I'm going to post the link. Uh, All right, so look here. I just posted the link. Uh, you can see that. Oh, look there. Jennifer put one on there too. So that's awesome. I, I want to have in Kathmandu. Please pray. Uh, you, are you saying you want to go to Kathmandu? Okay, right there's the uh, right there's the link. So I'm gonna pin that comment. Anybody wants to make a journey? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get this done. It's time to have your perspective renewed. It's time for promotion in your life. Come on, somebody say amen. It's time for a new positioning and it's time for provision to be released in your life. Hey guys, remember tomorrow night, we're going to be joined. We're going to be coming on live, praying for the nations of the earth. And uh, thank all of you guys, John Osterman. Thank you for jumping in. Osterman, thank you for jumping in. Newbie, there we are. Uh, thank all of you for jumping on tonight. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to see um, Sharon says, I pray for God's healing touch for spinal st stenosis uh, so I too can get back in shape. Awesome. We're praying for you uh, right there, Sharon. Come on, who else needs a miracle tonight? And look, sometimes, sometimes look, um, getting healthy is not about more exercise. It's about right nutrition. Exercise is only about 15 or 20 percent of our overall efforts. Um, we, we can never exercise our way. Most of us could never exercise our way to the place of health we need to be. We first got to get our nutrition uh, in line and, and spot on. So we, we will be glad to help you do that. Uh, Mary Fuquay loves it. I know that. So uh, uh, Donna says, I need healing. So Father, just touch Donna tonight every one of you. Uh, so thank you for jumping on tonight. It's a beautiful Sunday evening. 
And I've been on here an hour and 10 minutes. That's a long time. So uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night right here. Don't miss it. Uh, updates from around the world on this awakening. And uh, we're going to be praying for the nations of the earth. So get ready, get ready, get ready. See you tomorrow night. Thanks for joining us. Please be sure and share this with family and friends and click that link and let's go. See you guys tomorrow.